John, rookie fever is heating up, but I'm still basking in my glory from my league win last year. What was your most satisfying accomplishment from 2023? It's tough for me to choose. Um, I can obviously remember the most dissatisfying things, losing in my home league final once again. That's fair. Uh, being, being the runner-up in that league for like the fifth or sixth time over 11 years. Never the champion. Um, yeah. So uh, the, the, what, what, what are the, what are the, what is the most satisfying accomplishment? Most satisfying. Uh, it is not from a specific league. It is everything we did in fa for fantasy cares in 2023. So yeah, um, that honestly that is, is the biggest <laughs> success. And we are very, 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 very lucky that we have such a supportive population of people. So we had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good work done in 2023 and i've got a pretty good feeling you're going to run it back in 2024 as well seems to be uh, going pretty well so far <laughs> right good good start and it's only march so good things are coming with that let's jump into the meat of the show hello you have reached the fantasy hotline ask us anything Welcome to the Ask Us Fantasy Hotline, where we answer your questions to set you up for fantasy success. I am Justin Edwards, and tonight we have the privilege of being joined by John Bosch. John, I haven't talked to you for a while. What's the best new beer you've had over this winter? You made this. That is like, do you have any idea how challenging that is for me to answer that kind of a <laughs> put, question? Put you on the spot right off, right off the bat. Like, I mean. I can't answer what my favorite children are either um, <laughs> because it's so tough. Um, so over the winter, that also is a very specific timeline. I, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop hemming it on. It's basically anything from Drecker. If you, okay. if you followed me on Twitter, you have come to realize that I love Drecker beer. It is from North Dakota. Um, but they make smoothie sours and oh, oh yeah, my I think I have had them before. Goodness, literally anything from them that I've had has been just amazing. So I'm gonna go with the entire brewery, their entire product line uh, of smoothie sours. You find one from right. Trekker, get it, drink it, it's gonna be good. That counts, that counts. Uh, tonight, though, we John and I could probably shoot the stuff about beer for. A good 30 40 minutes we'll we'll talk a little bit about fantasy football at least um we're gonna uh take a step back from our like raw player evaluations we've been doing over the last few weeks we're gonna kind of talk about league settings um how to make your leagues a little more interesting um how to exploit the settings in your league to make fantasy success it's not always about picking the right guy sometimes it's just about getting the valuation on player names correctly it doesn't matter exactly how you go about that it's just about piling up value until you can get to your get to your championship um we'll talk about that for a what a while we'll hit john with a five by five farewell rapid fire and then we'll get him on out of here everything sound good for you bosh that sounds great you're <laughs> I, I appreciate you accommodating my lack of caring about players individually <laughs> sorry hey, i love i love players as nfl players as fantasy players there i mean they're just the they are what make up my roster. Like they're what yeah. make up my teams. So and it's it has done you well for years as well. So I, I'm excited to to pick your brain about that as well. Um, let's start off here talking about some of some unique dynasty league settings. They don't have to be dynasty leagues either. Just league settings. Um, and I know that you're involved in quite a few unique leagues. <laughs> um, so I might might pick your brain with some, about some of those. Some of which I've actually never um joined up on which i still feel pretty bad about i think we realized too late in the year last year that i had never been in an eliminator somehow um what are your favorite types of leagues what are your favorite league types be they dynasty or one and done leagues or redraft leagues or best ball or what have you so my favorite style is salary cap i that's what my home league is i've got two other leagues that basically run almost the same way we auction <laughs> uh, and when a player comes up for auction, it's a complete free agent market. There's in two out of the three, there's no rookies, anything like that. It's just a full open market. So you don't get a, you don't get an advantage if, if you do, if you get last place, um, 
you basically, you spend the money, you commit that money and that money is committed. Uh, my contracts go up to four years, five years, if it's a Debbie player that you sign uh, and you have a salary cap. So we, we basically battle back and forth over offering contracts to these players, um, increasing money, increasing years of the contract and stuff. And that is my favorite because if you mess up, <laughs> there's really no like easy out for it. Um, right. You have to be real careful in how you spend your how you spend your salary cap. It, it, it ends up being real, real fun. Plus, it's a live auction for all of them, and which is just, always fun. It's a joy. Yeah. And and these are typically pure dynasty leagues. They're not like keeper leagues where you're only keeping four or five guys. These are this is your team in perpetuity. Well, you keep everybody that's on a contract. Uh, if their yeah. contract expires. You don't keep them. So right. <laughs> if you sign a guy to a one-year deal, you have him for a year. You sign a two-year deal, you have him for two. So there's there's turnover every year, which is part of why I like it, because every year there's good players to go and try and sign to new contracts. Right. And the, I feel like it's that's fun because so many teams can can flip so quickly. You could be the worst team in the league in 2022, and you could be – um, continuing for a title in 2023. Yeah, and it, it's fun to watch the league do it. Like people realize it now. When when their team is bad, just shed salaries, shed yeah. them. Get do whatever you can to get yourself the most possible salary cap space, and it is going to be to your advantage. And and it's it's fun to watch some of the trades that happen because you just you see players that I mean they have a really good player at a really high contract, but they only have them for a year left, so they'll just pay the entire year out. And trade him to somebody else that's got, you know, a player that's young on a cheap contract but might not be producing or is injured now. So you get some really unique trading uh, in a salary cap league. Yeah. You add, add a little bit of nuance to a dynasty league as well as opposed to just having that player forever. And then the rookie draft comes and then that's pretty much it. Once yeah. you're done with the rookie draft in dynasty leagues, if you're not making trades consistently, there's not a lot of mix-ups. Everyone knows what they're going into the year with. Pretty much. <laughs> um, out, outside of a salary cap system, what are some other ideas you've had or what are some other ways that you've played in Dynasty that makes those leagues a little more interesting? So for me, uh, Superflex is a must. Auction Agreed. is a almost must. Um, I will not do drafts anymore <laughs> just because I, I don't find them as exciting. Uh, so I will either do auctions or the style that I have come to love uh, is blind bidding. It is terrifying. So in a, in a blind bid league, every time a player comes up, you know, instead of like nomination uh, and then everybody's bidding openly back and forth, the player comes up and everybody submits a blind bid and the highest bid okay. wins. <laughs> so you have no idea. You yeah. don't know, you don't know what the other people are going to be bidding. You are putting down your number that you're willing to bid and it's going to the highest bidder. And it yeah. is it's terrifying. It's awesome. It is it is so very fun to watch people spend super huge amounts of their budget on a few players and then be like, oh, now what do I do? <laughs> and then there's other <laughs> so people that just won't spend anything. Like, yeah. And they just keep thinking that they're eventually going to get players. But a lot of times it takes a long time and they don't get enough of them. So it's a real those, fun, fun balance. Do those bids typically become public afterwards like can you oh, yeah. see what everyone else had been oh no 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 so in mine i have it blocked uh, okay th there is a setting to close that off because for exactly the reason that you asked are they public <laughs> that is the reason that i make sure they're not public yeah <laughs> uh, it would be advantageous to know exactly what everybody else did right but no uh nobody can see it i can't even see it as the commissioner if i if i went and looked then like you know i would have to make it public that i looked everybody would know so Nope, that's all kept secret unless somebody tells you what they offered. Right. Um, but then you have to believe them. <laughs> yeah, you knew you knew where I was going with that. That's of a whole course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why it's whole, blocked. <laughs> right. That's a whole game within itself, too. Is like maybe you do tell people what you bid and just leave it up to them to see if they uh, believe you or not. <laughs> I usually take a I, not usually, but several times I'll take a screenshot of all my bids and drop it in the chat. They don't oh. know if I'm going to actually leave them or you can change your bids. I mean, right. So yeah. it's always a fun little game of cat and mouse. Like, <laughs> is this my actual bids or 
Am I just trying to get you to bid up? Am I bidding Let's low? See. Hoping yeah. you lower yours. <laughs> Let's see how much I can squeeze out of you. <laughs> yeah. I if mean, I'm it's... if I'm not going to get this guy, I want you to pay overpay Correct. for him. Or maybe I want to get this guy for cheaper, so I'm going to show a really low bid, and then anybody with a high bid is going to come down. And then I can jump over them for cheaper. <laughs> There's a see. This is why this is why blind bid is fun because yeah. those little kind of those mind games. Those are what those are what intrigue me about fantasy football is everything outside of the football. <laughs> <laughs> right. literally like yeah. everything outside of it i mean you get the fact that you get to change the rules to the game makes it a whole new game you know mm -hmm. makes yeah it interesting. i mean every the every unique league i play in is a different board game to me so i'm not playing right. i'm not i'm not just playing the same board game over and over and over i'm playing right. different different variations of it different games all together and what it does is it ends up helping i think it helps sharpen you for like all the leagues when you're right. playing from a bunch of, you end up, you have to play this game that we play from a bunch of different angles. So you don't just get stuck playing the same thing over and over and over and trying to yeah. make the same moves over and over and over. That's, that's, that's where I think I've gained a little bit of a, of an edge. It kind of becomes a natural progression, or at least it has for me too, is I'm start, I'm just now starting, even though I've played fantasy for so long, I'm just now starting to get into like the salary cap, uh, streets and that started from me you know starting in a probably a 10 team one quarterback redraft league however many years ago and then just the natural progression of what, playing in a 12 or a 14 or a 16 team and then finding out what dynasty was finding out what super flex leagues were you know going on and on and it's just the natural progression of like yep. how do you keep how do you keep this game interesting year to year and you can you do that hit, easily by just hit, changing the rules hit with something stronger every you know, you keep building up that tolerance. You've got to find right. new little things to go over it. I mean, right. How are you going to get that we fixed? Are, we're addicted to this. And, uh, you know, we need we need something stronger, something a little different. And uh, it's fun. You, t you talked about your home league. Um, I wanted to cut, kind of touch on specific leagues that you're involved in. Um, kind of specifically the Eliminator Leagues. And then we could talk about any other leagues you'd like to touch on. But kind of give people an understanding of what these eliminator leagues are and how they work and why you do them. Sure. So uh, they are the fantasy cares eliminators. They are one of our biggest fundraisers for fantasy cares, which is a charity, a full fledged charity headed by Scott fish. Uh, years ago, he asked me if I wanted to, if I had an idea on some, something else that we could add in uh, to help raise some money for fantasy cares. Like, what can we do that might be another thing, you know, in addition to SFB? And I right. said, well, <laughs> the year before I had actually started playing in an eliminator league that I set up for at the time, it was the fantasy insanity podcast, the very first podcast that I did. Um, and I, I brought on some listeners and some of the guests and we played in this eliminator league and it was really, really fun. <laughs> so I told Scott, I was telling Scott about this and I said, I think if, I think we could do this, where, you know, we get like one celebrity analyst, whatever, and they'll have a group of people that want to come and eliminate them. Um, right. Mostly in fun. Some probably get some hate eliminators <laughs> where, where they truly do want <laughs> hey, to, where they truly want to show that they're better than the person, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be better than you at this. So, uh, but they took off. Um, they were very, uh, it is a really fun platform and it's really fun to, be able to play against somebody that, that, you know, you listen to, you read, you watch, uh, you get that opportunity to do a draft with them. The settings are, we'll call it unique every okay. year. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think unique is a, we'll soft call it way, unique. <laughs> <laughs> a soft way to put them. They are uh, usually very, very unique to the point where it really makes you have to look at the settings and then adjust your strategy, which is my point. That's my goal. Um, because I want to make that point that when you're playing fantasy football, look, you should check the rules. You should understand how the scoring <laughs> right. in your league affects your playing. So, I'll, you know, some people jump in and they are probably overwhelmed. Others go full fledged into it. They, they, you know, really, really look into what these settings are, what these rules are. And again, it's something that helps sharpen them for their other leagues. We do these in May. So it's very early. <laughs> Yeah, uh, basically, that's super they, early. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of become a little appetizer for SFB at this point. So 
but you're but you're you're thinking ahead and you're drafting with other people that are thinking ahead. You're drafting with the people that create the content that everybody right. goes out and reads and pre preps for for their leagues, you know, that are drafted in July. So you're getting this kind of uh the sneak peek in the into this vision and those are those are really cool. So for those that don't know an eliminated league, the lowest scoring team every week is eliminated. Yeah. So 18 people play in these leagues. It's one celebrity and then 17 people that sign up and play against them. And we do ask that people donate, you know, that's how, that's how we raise a little bit of money. So mm -hmm. if you're playing against somebody you like, you donate, you know, um, but then every single week, one person's eliminated. Uh, the chats are super fun in these it, during the draft. It's ex super exciting. Obviously when the celebrity gets eliminated, most of the chats usually, uh, Get a little activity at that time, I should say, uh, because people are usually watching their team, right, and the celebrity's team. They don't really care about anybody else. <laughs> right. uh, a lot of people just want to beat that celebrity, and uh, of course, win too. But you know, beating that beating that person that you signed up to play against, it's always a little crowning achievement. And so usually, when that person goes out, there's a there's a little bit of uh, activity in the chat. The the idea of an eliminator is very enticing as well just because there's really if you're still in the league there's no reason to not be setting the best lineup you possibly can every week these aren't even lineup settings these are best balls oh they're best balls oh that's yeah. even better oh so that makes that makes plenty of sense if it's going on in may so draft and done it best that's ball. it you draft so 16 yeah, players no free agency no player movement each week. that's awesome i love that some people definitely get taken out by injury it happens well, yeah, no way around that's, it. It's a be it's a best ball. That's best ball. <laughs> yeah, that's even even normal uh, lineup setting leagues like an injury yeah. can derail you. There's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> it's yep. just the luck of the draw. Um, touching on kind of a an F an, an eliminator parallel is SF SFB 14, and I know you guys announced a couple things here in the last week. Do you want to touch on what that was? Sure. So, I mean, for anybody out there that doesn't know what SFB is, um, search the hashtag SFB 14 or 13 or 12 or 11 or X. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> currently SFB 14 though. Uh, so this is our, this is, you know, obviously started by Scott Fish, very, very well-named tournament uh, or league. It is a pro am celebrity league that has just thousands of people in it. They, they everybody will be drafting everybody plays in the same league everybody's in a 12 team division you play your first 11 weeks obviously you play somebody in your division uh and there's mean scoring as well and then week 12 starts the playoffs i believe i don't know that he's released the playoff format for this year yeah but that's what it's been the last that's that's what it's yeah. been the last few years so i don't, I don't think that will change because it seems to work pretty well and then and then it's like a certain percentage advances every single week until you get to week 17 and the final, um, which I think last year had like 50, I want to say 50 people made that it to the right. final week out of a little right. over 3,300. So it's a, it is a task to win it, but it again, gets a little cutthroat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is another league where, I, I mean, if you name an analyst, they're playing in it um, right. and, and you might end up in a division with them. There are at this point, a lot of, celebrities that play in it uh it's growing it's growing and growing and growing we started the live drafts scott wanted as you know kind of came out of COVID a couple of years ago 2022 we started there were some live drafts associated with it uh those grew last year this year they are extensively growing um they they are there's going to be a lot more of them we've not announced where they're going to be yet so i'll keep that a secret for now okay uh, heard. but that it's coming that's coming. Um, obviously, we've we've gone overboard in a fun way with all the merchandise, um, and that's what just got released was our our first early access pack. Where if okay. you make a donation, you get the first three shirts uh, for SFB fourteen. So there's a video up on our YouTube for that. I highly recommend everybody go over to the YouTube channel Fantasy that's Cares just, Org. The fa yeah, okay. <clears throat> Fantasy Cares. Yep, you'll see a video for that. That. Uh, that previews the the first three shirts. It's a blockbuster logo, kind of. I should say it's a it's, it's a, a logo based off a of blockbuster. It's, it's a, a video rental, logo. a video rental yes. logo. 
No, we are legally allowed to parody a logo, but I'm, it's okay. not the logo. <laughs> you okay. can parody a logo. Um, and that's what it So There's a Blockbuster parody logo. There's a Netflix parody logo. Uh, and the other one's a Warner Brothers parody logo. So this theme this year is movies. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of fun. There's a lot of people that like a lot of movies. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. Uh, we have uh, we've gotten some really good ideas. We've been working on this one for a while as well. So. It's all it's all characters, right? It's movie characters. So, so the divisions are characters. Oh, okay. The uh, the merchandise and stuff will end up being like the movies that they're movie based. Okay. Like that. So because I mean it's it's not fun to put you can't put somebody's face on a shirt. Like yeah, right. <laughs> but we can come up with uh, I so I know like Back to the Future's been released, Top Gun's been released. Yeah. Um. I saw that one of them was like Batman Returns, wasn't it? Or Batman Forever? There, there is a Batman logo that got released uh, in the videos. So I, I, I need a checklist of what's been released because it's not all been released, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, but some of it's out there at this point. We have put some out. We, we put, you know, every once in a while, Bob will put a little teaser out there, and uh, he does a great job. The, the logos are awesome. The yeah. The merchandise. They do look really awesome, <laughs> actually. If if you're if you're watching this, you should jump over to Fantasy Cares. When we're done here, don't do it right now, and look at some of those uh, teaser trailers. They're very they're very cool. They look great. Yeah. Let's so, I let's mean, say he's coming up. We're like I said, the yeah. live announcements will be coming soon, and that's that's when you'll have to go and sign up and uh, put your name in for a live. Justin can come down to Cincinnati and draft live this year, and right instead of ditching us, you know. <laughs> I was I was actually talking about this with with Sal earlier. I think I think I was out of town. I'm gonna you are I, I, yeah. See <laughs> you you, you did not ditch me. You were out of town. You were out. Of town. I was pretty yeah. certain I was. There was a reason I didn't come. I wasn't just avoiding you guys. No no no. You were you were unavailable. Which <laughs> this year this year you got to make it happen. Sal is yeah. hosting the Vancouver one. So for those of you up there in Vancouver, yep. that's what I heard. Oh crap! I actually shouldn't have said that because we have not announced Vancouver yet. Oh well. <laughs> Let's let's say hypothetically that one of your favorite movies might be in there. Is there a division that you might have your eye on, or do you want to keep that kind of under wraps? Oh no! If I so like Goonies is my kind of like favorite movie. Okay. Like it, I I like watching movies. I'm not the person that rewatches movies over and over and over and over okay. and over and over and over and over. Um, because once I've seen it, like I'd rather watch a new movie. Sure, but Goonies yeah. I watch repeatedly. Um, so I am hoping that there ends up being, uh, a, you know, I'm hoping that some Goonies characters make it, uh, which division would I choose from that movie? Probably sloth, maybe chunk. Okay. All right. Uh, like those, 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 those might be the uh, top two that I would take from it. Definitely not like Mikey or, uh, I'm trying to think of Mikey's brother. Can't remember his name. Definitely not him. Josh Brolin or James Brolin or whoever it was. Oh yeah, I think it was, I think it was played by Brolin, but yeah, definitely you not the dirtbag jerk that drives the convertible. Right. So that's like Chuck the, or Sloth. That's like the villain, the villain division. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was, I, I would I actually, thought... if there was a bit, not so obviously, I'm not like, I'm not a Star Wars fan. I don't, I don't hate it. I just don't, I don't get into it like others. Yeah. Uh, which conflicts with Russ Fisher, who is a massive Star Wars fan. Um, <laughs> so there's a part of me that's like, you know what? Just put me in Darth Vader, because I want to be in. The, I want to be in the hero division from that movie, like the the true hero from that division. Because as far as I know, he is the true hero, right? From whatever. Yeah, he's the good guy, I th right? I, I think I more or less. I, I mean, he's that I, one I dude's dad, remember. and everybody talks about that one dude. So his dad has wow, to be better. Spoiler. Right? Oh, that's a start. <laughs> sorry, folks. <laughs> Look, if you guys haven't seen Star Wars, um, which came out 47 years ago, <laughs> well, you've been spoiled. Really? Thanks, Good Lord. That is old. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least that. Yeah. I don't something know. Like I, that. I couldn't 45 tell years. There's, there's somebody out here that's going to get really mad. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be. If you rest. guys don't know when Star Wars came out. What is, what is your issue? <laughs> well, I sent you a picture of a, of a bunch of my leagues. Yeah. Like. Because you and said this is a wanted, lot of leagues. Yeah, you said you wanted to talk about some other ones. And yeah, I was like, I don't even know where to begin with that. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll just let you randomly pick a league, and I'll give you something that about it that's unique. As as a dorky, and I don't know if this is what it's referencing, but as a dorky, um, like real time strategy 
computer game nerd as a kid, I would like to know what Fog of War is. Okay. So Fog of War even... is, is it's a dynasty league uh, that is based in blind bidding. That's the Fog of War. Oh. Uh, so this is this is a 70 team league. 70? Where, <laughs> yes, 70. It's a five copy 70 team league. Uh, so there is 10 divisions. Every division is seven teams. And then there's two conferences of five each. There are prizes if you win your division, prizes if you win your conference, prizes if okay. you win the overall. Um, yeah. So like, and it's a ladder league. So as you as you improve, if your team is better, you're playing in a higher league, higher conference or higher division, higher conference. Oh, and you're playing for higher prizes. Like so, like you're in a premier league. Yeah. So there's there, oh, that's there, sweet. You know, there's a little bit of relegation to it where you know if you have a bad season, you're not playing for that top top prize. You you can play for the overall league prize. You can still win it, even if you were the worst team the year before. But you can't win the highest conference. You can't win the highest division because you're getting kicked to the bottom. So that is super cool. Yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty fun one. Like I said, that's a that's a blind bid one. Uh, FF Ghost named it, um, and he nailed that name, Fog of War. So it's really oh, that's fun. Fantastic. I've never I've and, never even considered a, a relegation fantasy football league. Oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Yeah. So and this one's five copies. So imagine when that blind bid report comes out. It doesn't just show the top winner. It shows the top five winners. Yeah. So you were asking earlier, like, if you ever know what somebody else did. In this case, in this you case, do. In this case, you know five bids. You yeah. know the top five. So there might be one person that spent way more than the other four right. people. I've been on that side of it. It's a little less fun. Right. Well, so like I've also he got been him on for the other 12, side. I paid 200. <laughs> yeah. So I've been on the side where you're, where you're the one that pays the least. That feels really, really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, ooh, I'm sure you feel really, really more. good then. <laughs> I, I didn't miss out on the player. I got what I wanted, and I got what I wanted for the cheapest amount I could have gotten in. Like, that feels so good. <laughs> so good. So that, that's the, Fog of War. The Fog of, Fog of War sounds like up my alley. That sounds like a lot of fun. What are the – I may have even heard you talk about these before. What are the, the Red List leagues? You've got Red List 1, 2, and 3. Yep. So these are run by Matt Price. Uh, these okay. are all auction-based leagues. He is a zookeeper, and he is very yeah. passionate about, about, about animals. So all Matt of these will be leagues... on here in a few weeks, actually. Oh yeah, good. Yeah, tell him I say hi. <laughs> I will. I talk to Matt frequently. <laughs> uh, no, so Matt is one of the best commissioners out there. These leagues are awesome. Um, <laughs> there's a reason I play in all of them. They're very fun, and, and you're an animal in each one of them. So you're playing, okay. if you win, the, the, there is a charitable element to each of these leagues that gets donated then at the end of the year to the charity of whatever team wins. So um, I have won a little bit of money for the Manatees at one point. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I split a championship with the Manatees. I have not won anything for the Crocodiles yet. Uh, and Red List 3 is starting up this year. So Oh, nice. It's restarting. It actually was around for a little while, but it's a. He says that one set as a vampire league. And what's a vampire? A vampire oh, what's a vampire league? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, glad so I, I'm glad we had you on. This is yeah. This is fun. I'm, I'm being so, enlightened. <laughs> a vampire league is a league that ends when the vampire wins. But here's the thing: the vampire does not get to take part in the draft or the auction or whatever the startup is. Okay. So the vampire builds their entire. They they do their entire team from what's left that's how they okay. build their team but so year one's a pain in the butt presumably kind of, probably <laughs> most of the time but <laughs> if the vampire beats you they got to take a player oh any player yeah any player uh there are usually protection rules <laughs> like if you want to protect your best player you have to protect them using your future first round pick um wow. some people will have like full on like Two seconds equal a first. So if you have a first and two seconds, you can protect two. There's lots okay. of lots of ways to vary the protection, but usually one or two players end up being protected. Yeah. Um, but obviously, if it's a, it, it, you can build a pretty good team once you once you win a few games. It's just this snowball effect uh, that oh, is yeah. crazy right. fun. Um, just it, it's it's very very fun. 
everybody starts rooting against you. Nobody will trade with you. That's, that's what I was about to ask. Does anyone even trade with the vampire? <laughs> so this is the pitch that I make because usually I've played in a few vampire leagues. I only like to play as the vampire because that's way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fun. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose. I'm going to lose the first year or two. Um, that's fine. Take my money. I'm going to have the fun. I don't care. Um, my pitch is why would you not? There are going to be some teams where a reset is better for them because their team is so bad and there's yeah. other teams that are so good. Like just vote root for the reset. Of course, some people don't like that mentality and they're like, no, 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 that's not the point of this. We we were here to defeat the vampire. And I'm like, well, you should be here to win the league. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, maybe, but there are definitely people that we, we can eventually overcome their, their, there's always somebody there, you know, always somebody wants to say, never trade a vampire, never trade with the vampire. Well, eventually we send offers that people just can't refuse. I mean, this is the dynasty league. So if we're sending you like a 23 year old wide receiver for Cooper, that that's, you know, relatively good. And we're going yeah. after like say Cooper cup or something, you know, an old wide receiver, but that's still good. Like, there's ways for us because it's our advantage just to win this week. If we win this week, we're going to get another player out of it. Right. So we end up overpaying in a lot of trades as the, the I'm sorry, not we, the vampire ends yeah, up right, right, right. Yeah. overpaying. Um, there's always a, there's always people that try to do the embargo and don't let anybody trade with them. Yeah. But, you know, the vampire always finds a way to overcome that. And, right. Especially if you're, you know, you're giving some extra juice on those trades. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, hmm, it's I'll, trading I'll with the vampire is the best. You are going to get the best offer. You're not going to get it. <laughs> Nobody else is going to beat it. Right. Exactly. We just need the other people to be selfish. Like think about their team first, which they should. Producer <laughs> Sal wants to know if what, what you think of starting a 128 team double super flex league. Maybe it would need to be 120, so it'd be like 10 copy. <laughs> I was doing the math. Is 128 divisible by 14? It's not. Uh, oh. 14 is like my favorite. So 128. So let's say, I mean, like 140 team league. How many copies? So typically, typically that's how I do it. Like uh, whether it'd be it's like either 12 or 10, 14, 10 copies of 14. But he wants it to be a double super flex league so you can start four quarterbacks. So this might I have to that. be a are you are we keeping yeah. the 14 team? Sure. <laughs> this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> um okay, so what you are describing, I do have a league like this. I have to figure okay. out which uh so kaleidoscope. Uh that is a oh I see it. <laughs> I forgot about this this kind of startup. So kaleidoscope <laughs> is a choose your adventure league. Um, everybody was given the same tool at the beginning and how they twist it up and determine it that makes their team. Uh, so what we did with kaleidoscope is you could pick any player. It's, this was a 100 team, 100 copy league. There <laughs> was no draft. There was no auction. We really, there was an, there's the ADP from the startup, the year that we started. Yeah. This is, you know, here is a 12 round ADP actually pulled from real startups, you can pick one player out of the first round. You can pick one player out of the second round. You can pick one player out of the third round. One player out of every round. But everybody else gets to do the same thing. So like if 90 people have Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> is Patrick Mahomes a difference maker? Right. Or if you're He's the one person, for everyone. like Saquon Barkley is not in this league. Because the year that we started, he was a first round pick. Who's going to take a first round running back? Right. And then you can't, so we do have waivers, but you cannot pick up a guy on waivers that's in the top 20 rounds of ADP for the year. So every year that top 20, the, the rounds, the, the players in the top 20 of startup ADP changes, yeah. those players are removed. So you cannot pick them up. So like Saquon Barkley was never, he was not drafted in the startup. Yeah. He's never going to be outside of the top 20. When he does, he's not going to be anybody that anybody wants. So like- right. Saquon's not in this league and he never will be. There's no way to acquire him once that startup was gone. <laughs> this is like, this is, <laughs> you're, 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 I'm watching you like try and follow along with this. Can you see the wheels are turning? They're, yeah, they're, it, but they're it's, a little rusty right now. <laughs> so there was a, when we started this league, there ended up like there was a <laughs> lot of game theory strategy in this. Of, yeah. I would I mean, say like, it, it's like DFS. Do you take 
do you take the free space? You know, when a running back goes down and there's right. a, a $4,500 running back that's all of a sudden going to be the bulk load carrier, do you take that free space? Right. That's Everybody what I was, else is that's what I was trying it. to do in my head. I'm like, this sounds yeah. like, like DFS. It, it is. There's definitely DFS elements to it because in order to win, you have to have something that differentiates your roster from everybody else's. Right. So, I mean, there's all kind of like when, when we did the startup, I mean, anytime like uh, there was, cause we did like a few rounds at a time where people or no, everybody submitted their lists and then it all got publicized. And I mean, there was people breaking down, you know, the roster ship percentage of this guy, this <laughs> right. guy, this guy, yeah. this guy. And it was, I mean, it was, it was very, very cool. But in that league, you can start three quarterbacks. So oh, okay. it, it, it's a best ball league again. Um, but it does start up to three quarterbacks and it's got very favorable quarterback scoring. So Sal would be in love because he would just put like 25 right. terrible quarterbacks on his <laughs> roster. But each week, each week, one three or two of them. Of them yeah. yeah, each week, one or two of them might be starting and, and might be playing. So you can get by with that. Um, right. So yeah, I, I that that is a double super flex league that I play in right now. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it does it sounds fun if if slightly confusing, but I'm here for it. Oh, they're all slight everything on this list that I sent you. <laughs> right. Uh except for like the generic public leagues that I play in just for kind of research at this point. To you, keep don't, myself you don't a play any, bit any start seven one quarterback leagues anymore? I have one on this list and I I don't like it. <laughs> uh but it is it, it does have a fun element of a weekly prize. So like that's literally the reason that I find it interesting. It's just like top score. Yeah. The yeah. the top score each week wins a monetary prize. So I like, like without that. that element, I definitely want to be in it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> There's not enough going on here. <laughs> no, it's it's like super boring. <laughs> Pick one more. There's gotta be one more in there. Yeah. That, uh that's I do answers. want to hit one more. This is fantastic. Every single one, I'm like, God, I don't know what that is actually. Well, Tell I can say it. Empire and Supremacy are Two different versions of the same thing. Okay, um, yeah. Tell me about this supremacy or empire. You've got quite a few supremacies. Yeah, so it's the same. It's all one league. We play in six different formats of fantasy football against the same group. So there is not inter-league trading. Like you can only trade with your within that one league. So like okay. we play a salary cap format, a dynasty format, a redraft format, DFS format. Uh, where each week we play in a DraftKings league against each other. Uh, oh, okay. We play okay. NFL playoffs format. Uh, and then usually we have either a best ball or a guillotine league, um, some other kind of like best ball type competition thrown okay. in. Um, so you play in all six of these formats. You get a you get a finishing score in, in every single one of them, one to 14. If you get first place, you get 25 points. If you get last place, you get zero points. Okay. All these points. I'm following. Add up together at the end of each year, there is a massive champion of you know all they, that you were the best across all six formats right for this year. But in addition to that, we keep track. In addition, <laughs> yes. So this is actually like a five-year league. <laughs> Every okay, five years. If somebody sweeps all six divisions or all six formats, they win either the Empire or Supremacy pot, which is okay which is a nice pot that's getting money put into it every single year. Three, if six, after if yeah. after five years, nobody has won all six, nobody's won all six before, um, then that money all pays out based on how, how you've done over the last five years in all six formats. So It's like a dynasty you wanna, dynasty. <laughs> you want to talk about having to be good to win? Like you're not going to luck box into right, winning yeah, yeah. this thing. Like you have to actually be, you have to be good. You have to be, be able to play in a bunch of different formats and be good in all of them. It is, to me, it's a really true test of how good a fantasy player somebody right. is. Um, You're not going to luck into a great draft pick and then win five years of this. Correct. There's, there's, it takes out so much of the luck element. It's ridiculous. And it's fun. I mean, it's for me, it's, I, I right. love them um, because like I said, like I said, I finished second in my home league over and over and over. If there was a prize for consistency, you would have won. <laughs> I'd be in really good shape. Right. <laughs> That's why I started Empire. I might not be able to win the damn league, but 
I'm finishing consistently near the top. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> yeah. So that's Empire. And, and then Empire was the first one that I did. It was so fun that I did it again <laughs> and called it Supremacy. So I love that. I And I've learned so much now. I had no yeah. idea what a vampire. I don't even know if I had heard of a vampire league before. I don't know oh, how I hadn't. So fun. So I have. Uh, so Red List Three is a vampire. If you see on that list, Death Becomes You. Uh, that's run by oh, Brian yeah. McDowell. Okay. It's it's partially a vampire league. <laughs> um, so Ryan started that one. It's got three divisions. It's three copy also. One okay. of the divisions has vampires in it. That's what I co-manage a team with. Matt Price and Bob Gilchrist were the vampires in, in one. Uh, Ryan McDowell and Dan Myler are also vampires. Okay. Um, then there's another division that is sniper active, which <laughs> this is where the winning team, whoever wins, whoever wins gets to steal a player from the losing team. That okay. So that's one of the divisions. Um, the other division I should know, but I'm not in it. So I'm trying to think what the other, the other one's got the other, Oh, the other one's got um like a it's a license to steal. So like there was uh there was a license to steal asset put up for auction during the auction in that division, and somebody won it. So okay. if they win against somebody in their division, they get to steal a player, but then that license to steal gets passed around and stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. so it's you it's, don't keep it forever. Like yeah, I think it, I'm pretty sure that if you win, you use it and then it goes to the other person, and then they have it. So, oh, okay. Uh <laughs> so there is some vampire element to that becomes you. It was so really the, fun. We we the, last year was the first year we won yeah. three games. <laughs> three games. Yeah, we were we didn't we like ridiculously. I mean, we ended up with like Gus Edwards, who like nobody thought anything of, and then he ended up right. being very good. Uh, we we just like every player that was terrible off the waiver wire, like we ended up getting having them. <laughs> like yeah, we we just I mean it's kind of luck that, you know, we knew who to pick up, but we picked up a bunch of people that then a few weeks out of the year, they all came together and hit at the right time. So <laughs> it was fun. Who was that? If you can remember, this is a year ago. Who was the, who was that first person you, you pulled off of the losing team? Um, Let's see here. Who did we steal first? I want, hmm. Let's see. Oh, I was going to say, I think he has this posted, but he does. He does, but not on the actual website. But I can check our roster transactions. Oh, this is not great. Uh, not great show right here. Not great. Hey, I'm uh, the one that asked the stupid question. <laughs> no, no, no. I should. I, if, I'd have been think, if I'd have been thinking, I would have uh, had that. Okay, here we go. Uh, Mark Andrews. Okay. We, we took Mark Andrews. It looks like that was the first player that we, Oh no, we got Kirk cousins before that. Sorry. October, oh, nice. 3rd, October 3rd, we won a game and we got Kirk cousins. So what was that like week? I don't know, four or five, four or five, somewhere in there probably. And uh, so four games in, you got a legit quarterback. Well, he ended up getting injured, but you didn't know that you didn't know. We traded him. Be. We traded him instantly. As soon as we oh, traded okay. him two days after we got him, we traded him uh, because it's a very tight end heavy league. And yeah. we had quarterbacks at the time because uh, we had Jimmy Garoppolo, um, who remember he actually was starting for a time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, even though he was terrible, like we nobody nobody took him in the startup auction, so we got him. I think we might have had Gardner Minshew as well. So okay, like we we had some we had enough quarterbacks, so we gave up Cousins for Kittle, uh, and then all of a sudden we had a lineup that had like two starting quarterbacks. We had Kyron Williams because nobody had him. Like, yes. Nobody took him in the startup. So, I mean, yeah. like we had him and Gus Edwards. Like all of a sudden when you look at it, it's like, okay, they actually have like five valid starters. Now it's out of like nine or 10 players. So our team is still terrible. <laughs> but when things lined up, it was, it was fun. Real fun. I love it. This has been very, very insightful. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know about crazy leagues, I am I am the person to ask because look every they, every time I, I come about. with you asking what kind of leagues you're in, I learn something new <laughs> every single time. I recommend the vampire league highly enough. I mean, they're so fun. This is this that sounds exceptional, actually. That sounds like a ton of fun. I need to I need to merge a salary cap with a vampire. That would be 
amazing. Whoa. Yeah. Can you imagine going through all that? But yes, you can imagine. But imagine going through the whole the whole auction just to have, have somebody that player from stolen you. four weeks later. <laughs> be so Don't mad. lose. I mean, you should not lose <laughs> right, to a team yeah, right. built off the waiver wire. <laughs> right. Yeah. You shouldn't be losing for the first year or so. <laughs> it should never well, happen. Like it's so funny, but it, yeah. I mean, it always does. It's inevitably going to happen because if you just think about it, there's always players that come from that waiver wire. And I mean, we built our whole team from it. So we, we basically had like the first 30 waivers of yeah. the league. <laughs> right. <laughs> Usually the right person's going to fall. Just clear those waivers out. Yeah. That's yeah. That that's fun. I'm going to have to look into one of these. <laughs> well, sweet. Um, that was a lot of fun. I do want to hit you with these rapid fire. We call them rapid fire. You yeah. can answer them as quick as you want. But let's hit you with these five by five farewells before you head out of here. What is? Oh yeah, it goes twice. <laughs> I'm like, it's still going. What is the worst league setting you have ever seen? So I will open with everybody should play what they want and all settings are fair and correct and right. It, it, as long as the league has chosen to play it and everybody's on board. If, did I do enough of it? Trade deadlines. Yeah. They're the freaking worst. <laughs> trade deadlines. They, yeah. they are terrible. They, trade deadlines are there for one reason, and it's to keep the rich teams rich and not let the poor teams get rich. Yeah. So, that's a that's good. A, I, I used to have trade deadlines. I got rid of them in all my leagues, and I am so happy I did. I, I did a complete 180. Trade deadlines yeah. are literally the worst league setting. But again, yeah. don't come at me playing what you want. If you love your trade deadline, because you like that that 12th place team can never get better. I totally get it. <laughs> totally get it. Keep doing it. You keep raking in that money and never let that team get better. Yes, it makes perfect sense. And I'm sure they'll stick around in your league for a very long time as the 12th place team over and over and over again. Yep. Yep. Having a great yep. time. For sure. That won't be well, just constant turnover and then people will complain about that. Right. Make exactly. your leagues better. Right. What is the this is this is dangerously close to player evaluation? No, 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 this is good. <laughs> what is the best rookie draft pick slot? I mean, how could it not be the 101? It's probably, yeah, it's the 101. Like, I mean, you, in order to get to the 101 from anything else, you have to give up something to get there, right? Yeah. So I will say there are like tiers of rookie slots. I want the 101. Like, if I then there's then there's a group for me because I, I do pay attention, even though like uh, I don't have the hottest player takes because ultimately it doesn't matter. I'm going to draft who I'm supposed to draft, yeah. like who I want to draft in that spot. Um, I want to be the 107 and above. The 108 starting to grow on me a little bit. I was really hoping that a running back would crush the combine right. and like jump up into that 107 so that I can get Brock Bowers at 108 and be really happy. Um, it didn't happen. But J.J. McCarthy, like, I think he's starting to get some buzz about jumping up there. So yeah. I'm really hoping, like, he does something good. He gets drafted to a place that pushes him into that top seven so that I can completely avoid him. And then at the 108, I'm happy. So 101 is the obvious answer. Yeah, Rookie draft slots that I'm trying to actively get into are the 107, if I can get it for a decent amount. But I think a lot of people know there's a top seven rookies. So yeah. I'm kind of get kind of going for that 108 as well. And I'm I'm hoping that somebody in those seven picks ahead of me will make a mistake. <laughs> there's gonna like, be some super super flex rookie drafts where the first running back comes off the board at like one two oh four. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> not I, mean, even, not even I don't I don't think we're in the first round right now. I think people pe we've done that for years. Like 112, like, okay, I'm going to take the who I think is the best rookie. Well, I think we, I think too many people got Keyshawn Bond um, pushing that running back <laughs> yeah, up. I, I did. I'm one of those people. <laughs> oh, me too. Like, there were plenty of teams where, like, well, I need a running back. He's the best one. I don't, I'm not going to pick again until the 212. So yeah. I'm just going to take him here. It was a mistake. I learned my drop lesson. him in a couple of years. Right. Yeah. So How many? I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. This running back class, not exciting. How many years in advance should you be allowed to trade for rookie picks? So my leagues were always one year up until okay. last off season. I changed it to two years. Um, I trust the people in my leagues 
but mostly I run all my leagues with the money being handled through league safe <laughs> and yeah. I can open up a league safe two years out. I could open it up for further out if I wanted to. Um, but for me, two years is enough that somebody can really, if they really want to like attack picks heavy and they want to compile picks for two years, two full years, go for it. That's fine by me. Uh, it does give you more flexibility if you're somebody that's trading for a veteran, if you want to go for it. So to me, two years opened up more trade assets. I've liked what it's done. I do require that you pay your fee. <laughs> like if you pay yeah, for that, a pick two years fair. out, or if you trade your first two years out, you better be paid up for next year and for that that year two years out. And yeah. everybody's been everybody's been really good about it. So right. I mean, it makes sense. Don't don't tear down a team if you aren't expecting to be around yeah. in a couple of years. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, it's 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 a lot of it's about having the right people in your leagues. Um, right which is it's it's it makes everything a lot easier a lot better um but i did for years just run it as one year out okay. but i i i would played in some others that allowed for two and i could see that like there's a little more flexible flexibility in this trading like <laughs> yeah it, for sure so i just just I, a little more active i didn't vote on that didn't put it to a vote because i liked that to be uniform in all my leagues and i didn't want some of them to say let's do it and others to not i just said we're going to it <laughs> We're, we're yeah. making the switch. Everybody seems to have liked it. Nobody, nobody was upset about it. It's just one more thing to trade with, which is fun. Right. Exactly. More pieces. Really rapid. What is? Oh, sorry, I'm yeah. terrible at rapid fire. <laughs> don't don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're under no constraints here. I just want, didn't want to keep you all night. No, I gotcha. The best piece of startup draft advice. Have no strategy. There you no. go. Um. It's easy for me to say that just because I am comfortable operating uh, without really a plan. I think you have to have not necessarily a plan, but you have to understand various ways to attack a startup draft. It's easy to say best player available, no zero, zero RB, um, only take young wide receivers. If it's super flex, you know, QBX, let's <laughs> take a bunch of quarterbacks. Yeah. For me, the, the, the best advice I can give you is be aware of all the options that that are that are available to you. You might get pigeonholed by the other managers in your league and what they're doing. It might force you into a strategy, but as long as you're aware of what, what, what you can do with it, you can really maximize that strategy. If people are taking running backs, let them. <laughs> you switch right. to wide receivers. If everybody's going zero running back, I, I I don't know that I can say pivot and maybe take a couple running backs, but maybe maybe think about being that manager that then says, all right, I'm going to play a little heavier to win this year. When you see yeah. everybody else, they're already setting themselves up for two years from now. Try to win the league two years in a row while they're building for the future. I mean, that's yeah. but that's that's something you can't go into a draft planning. You have to go into it understanding if that option appears. Do you want to take it? And once you make that decision, you got to go for it. Be active, make trades. What just so awareness, <laughs> awareness right, and willing yeah. to act. That's my best advice. Yeah. And and kind of what we've been talking about a lot of this episode, understand your rules. <laughs> yes. If you don't if you don't understand your the rules of the league, especially if you're looking for a unique dynasty league that's not just a typical one quarterback start eight or whatever league. Make sure you know what's going on in the league settings. There will be people that watch hours and hours and hours of rookie highlights and film and stuff and never read their league rules. I'm like, yeah. They, you're, you're doing yourself such a disservice. Like, <laughs> right. read, the, read the rules of the game first because it, it affects the game that you're playing. Like, <laughs> right. it makes a pretty big difference. It's kind of the backbone of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's really important. <laughs> How many leagues is too many to run to commission? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question because <laughs> I haven't, <laughs> yeah, you don't. <laughs> uh, I either found it long ago and I'm numb or I haven't found it yet. Um, so for me, it's, it, this is the same question of how many leagues is too many to be in. It's not yeah. a matter of quantity. It's all about quality. If the league is fun, then it's a yes. If a league is not fun, doesn't offer you something, it's a no. Like I do commission a lot of leagues. <laughs> Um, you, you, you saw, I, I committed that league I sent you, that doesn't even have the eliminators in there. 
that doesn't have any of the oh, yeah, work I right. do with SFB. And <laughs> I literally have a separate account for my commissioning. Like that's what I sent you is the, those are the leagues that I play in. <laughs> that's for fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Th those are what I actually play. Now I run most of the leagues that I play in, but I do yeah. play in some that I don't run. Uh, but looking at my actual, my league count for the leagues that I signed commissioner, uh, last year there was 382. Now, granted, again, a lot of those are <laughs> SFB divisions. A yeah. lot of them are fantasy cares eliminators, number. things like that, uh, that go away. Like after well, yeah. I mean, SFB is year long, but the work really goes away for us when, with what we commission on it and the eliminators. I mean, those, go, those go away from a commissioner standpoint, seemingly as soon as the draft begins, uh, yeah. which is nice. So for me, it's all about finding the the right leagues to commission, the right leagues to be in. Anything that piques my interest and makes me want to do it, it doesn't make it too many. There are definitely some where I've been in them and I'm like, okay, this this league's just not fun. Yeah. I, I made a mistake. I'm out. Here's next year's league fee. Somebody can play for free on me. I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a fair point with for commissioners or for just playing in a league in general. It's about mm -hmm. quality of league. If if you're looking to join a league and someone sends you a team and you don't like the team, the rules don't don't mesh with you. Like don't don't join that league. There's no reason. There are thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of leagues out there looking for someone. You don't have to take something just because it's laying around. Never join a league based on the team. I don't even like when I post for my open teams, I do not even post the teams. The, like I don't Okay. Why, the roster don't don't choose don't choose to join my league because of the roster because that's going to change. <laughs> like, yeah, you can you are in charge <laughs> you are in charge of that. Uh, that is yeah. the one thing that has zero impact on your interest level in this league. Choose this league because of, because I run it because of the other people in it because of the way this league runs things like that. Those are things that aren't going to change. <laughs> right, your yeah. roster. <laughs> Like if, if you choose a if you choose it based only on the team, what happens when two of your three two of the three players that were on that roster that caught your eye, they get hurt. Like yeah, or one they of retire them, Andrew, or Andrew Luck retires out of nowhere. Like right. you're not you're gonna hate that team and then you're gonna hate that league. So that that yeah. is one thing. Like I when I choose my managers or invite my managers and stuff, new people, like anybody that as soon as they say, well, what's the roster look like? One. There's going to be a dispersal. So I don't know the answer to that because you're going to be in charge of making it. Yeah. Um, and if it's a one for one, it's like, eh, that, that's for me as a commissioner, like that's such a turnoff. Do you only want this league because of this team? Like, yeah, what it's just that's such. I want, I want you to be in this league in seven years. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I've had a decent amount of, I, I think that's one of the reasons that I don't have to search super hard to find. I know I have a, I know I have a reach that allows me to bring in people that are also very excited to play. So I, I'm not right. used to that. I get that. Um, but when somebody, when their first question is, what does the roster look like? It's like, are you only joining the league because of the roster? Like that's the most, that's right. the thing you get. That's the thing you're in charge of fixing or changing. <laughs> like, that's in totally in your control. Do you not have faith in your own self to fix whatever is broken on the roster? Like <laughs> have a little confidence in yourself. That's not the right response, but in my head, but, I that you know, for sure. <laughs> it, 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 it's under the skin a little bit. I, I get it. Yeah. John, it's always a pleasure. Anytime we get a chance to talk, thanks for jumping on tonight. Is there any party thoughts you have before we, before we close things down? Uh, go to fantasycares.org. Uh, donate, subscribe to our newsletter, go to, go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. The, the newsletter is important. It's going to get you information that many people want. One of the questions I get is how do I get in the SFB? And I, I tell people all the time, like, well, participate, <laughs> follow fantasy cares org on Twitter, follow mm -hmm. the YouTube channel, subscribe to the newsletter. I think people that did those kinds of things had no problem getting in last year. We have a lot of fun activities that we do just for, you know, interaction uh, to raise the profile of SFB. We do little stupid things on social media and people that interact and have fun, they managed to get in. So 
Yeah. Uh, that, that's my parting thing is anybody out there asking, how do I get an SFB? That's how you get in. <laughs> I've, I've seen you guys give away some, some tickets for on the fantasy cares YouTube page as yep. well. So I mean, yep. go and over we're going to be giving away a whole lot more coming up. There you go. So if you want into SFB and you're not exactly sure how to get there or how to raise your chances of getting in, make sure you interact with fantasy cares, go to fantasycares.org, the fantasy cares, YouTube page. Um, you can get on Twitter, Twitter or X, uh, look up John Bosch at John Bosch FF, uh, the, the fantasy cares, Twitter X, whatever we're calling it is on there as well. So do those things, increase your chances to get into SFB. And if you've never played in it, I guarantee you'll have a good time if you like fantasy sports in the slightest. So it's a good idea. If you've enjoyed our conversation here tonight, please consider liking and subscribing here. Uh, follow the Ask Us channel on all um, social media platforms at Ask Us FF. And if you'd like in the description here, you can sign up for our newsletter where we have our top 50 rookie ranks live right now. John, have a great evening. Everyone, have a great evening. Thank you, Justin.